In this video, I'll be taking a look at NeoVerb, a brand new reverb plugin from Isotope. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So you've probably got a reverb plugin included with your door. So if somebody's gonna bring out a new paid reverb plugin, it would better solve some problems, right? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at a new reverb plugin from Isotope called NeoVerb, and I'll be seeing if it does solve any of the problems that we commonly have when we insert reverb on our tracks. So, let's dive in. So here we are looking at the rather enticing interface for NeoVerb, and we're gonna start off by taking a look at one of its most defining features, which is the Reverb Assistant. Now the Reverb Assistant is there to help you to get to a really good starting point for the style of reverb which you want to apply. Now I'm applying this to an acoustic guitar, and it's simply there as an insert on the channel. So I'll be controlling the blend between the dry and the wet signal using this slider down here on the right. So let's get started by clicking on the reverb assistant which I'll do now and I've just got a few simple choices to make here first of all the style I'll set it to uh, reasonably dramatic then the size I'll set it to large and then the tone of the reverb I want it to be kind of bright so I'll click on bright there then I'll click on next now it wants me to play the audio and it's going to analyze that audio for around about 10 seconds or so so let's do that now <laughs> So you can see it's done a couple of steps there called auto cut and unmask. These both relate to a couple of EQs which we have included with this plugin. They're really powerful features, but I'll talk about those a little bit later. First of all, let's click accept and see what it's done for our guitar so far. I'll just pop the mix up a little bit there. Let's have a listen. Okay, so it's a good starting point, but I'd probably like to sort of blend some of the different reverbs which we have there a little bit more. And I'll be doing that by using the blend pad here. So let's get started with that. Oh, by the way, before we get into the blending, can I ask you quickly, if you do like this video, could you make sure you hit the like button for me? And if you like this kind of content, subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about other videos like this one. Now, back to blending. So with NeoVerb, we can use up to three different types of reverb at the same time. And we blend them using this blend pad in the middle here, a nice intuitive way to blend between the three different reverbs. Now, as I say, it's up to three different reverbs, so you can toggle them off and on over here as well. So let's start off up in the blue corner. This is where we'll be listening 100% to the early reflections. Now, early reflections are really important because you can take a really dry signal and put it into a kind of a space. Well, that's how I use them anyway. And I'll often do that before I go into my main reverb. Now over in the pink corner, we have two or three different choices of reverb which we can apply here. At the moment it's on plate, but we can also switch to a medium chamber and also to a room reverb as well. I'll put it back to plate there. And then I'll go off into the orange corner. Where is it? Uh, Peach corner, dark peach, if that's a color. Here we have a couple of different reverbs. These are our largest ones. We have the whole reverb and the large chamber as well. So we can take those three very different types of reverb and then blend them together to get a really natural sound if that's what we want. Now we've also got access to some fine control over these three by clicking on this advanced tab here. And you'll see there's quite a number of different controls here, particularly with uh, the timing of the reverb, uh, the size of the space that we're in diffusion, all kinds of good stuff like that. So you can get a very fine control over the different sounds of the three reverbs. Added to that, we also have some modulation effects over here. Again, controlled in terms of rate and depth using this kind of joystick control here. Now adding particularly pitch modulation is really good again for getting a little bit of variation to the sound of your reverb to separate it from your original dry sound. I only ever use it really subtly at all but you can definitely play around with it and get some weird kinds of effects if you push it to its to the extremes so that's the way we blend the different three reverbs together and we can change the sound and craft it here but i think one of the major things that we use to create a really good reverb sound is eq and it's that which we'll be talking about next 
So sometimes when we add reverb, we also start to add some problems. We can end up with kind of a muddy lack of definition if we're not careful. Now, one of the things that we use to combat that is EQ. And with Neoverb, we've got a couple of EQs included. Now, I think it's handy to think of these as kind of separate plugins outside of the reverb effect itself. One of them being a pre-EQ. So as its name suggests, it's an EQ before the reverb plugin. And also this reverb EQ, which is a kind of a post EQ. Now it's important to understand these don't change the sound of the dry signal whatsoever. So if I've got the dry signal on here and I start to play the guitar and then have a listen. You can see I'm making moves to the EQ there and it's making no difference whatsoever. It does, however, make a big difference to the wet signal. We'll have a listen to that now. Okay, now this first one that I'm playing here, the pre-EQ, is really handy for getting rid of kind of mud. So it means that we're not sending so much of the low end of the track through to the reverb. So I'll often create a kind of almost like a high pass type of filter here. Um, so I'm not sending any of that low end of the guitar through. Let's have a listen. So we're really just getting reverb on those kind of top end sounds right at the top of the guitar. Now, the other EQ is sort of tailoring the sound of the EQ after the event, so after we've applied the EQ. So really handy for just kind of crafting a sound from the EQ. Now, both of these EQs have some automation tools. So for example, here on the pre-EQ, we have an auto cut feature. If we click on that and then play the track, it starts doing some listening and then it comes up with a little curve which you can hardly see here. It's applied to the current curve that we have set up, but this is to get rid of any unwanted kind of resonances that you may have in the input signal. And we can exaggerate that with this slider here so you'll, you'll make it much more apparent. We can still make adjustments to our overall EQ curve and that will still be applied. So a nice handy feature. Likewise on the, re, on the post EQ or the reverb EQ, we have this un mask feature. Again, if we click that, it's going to listen to the track again, and it's going to set an EQ curve to kind of separate the reverb from the dry signal. Now, as well as all of that, we've got some tools to visualize what's happening. Um, we can turn on some masking metering here. So I'm going to set it over here um, to look at the dry versus wet signal. Let's play, a, play the song. <laughs> Now you'll start to see some sort of faint grey lines start to appear as the song goes ahead. Now that's very faint and it's just working at the moment with just that one instrument. However, I can also use this to compare it to other instruments. So I'll set it to um, this relay plugin here, which I have applied to an electric guitar a little bit later on in the song. Let's have a listen to the two together. After a while, you'll start to see some things happen here on the metering. <laughs> So that's really to, there to help you to see where things are crossing over so you can make some better uh, decisions in terms of your EQ curves to get things out of the way of each other in terms of the reverb. So sure, you can grab your favorite reverb plugin, chuck it on a track, adjust the mix between dry and wet, and you're done, right? Well, not really. If you do that, you can often end up with a muddy mess. It really doesn't help with your mix at all. The solution is to use a combination of EQ and reverb together, and also to blend different types of reverb together as well. I like the fact that that's all in one plugin here, and it's really easy to use and feels very organic. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, if you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button. That lets YouTube know that other people should see this video as well. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice. Do it with an angry face, it helps. And if you do like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>